Howdy Partnoids, welcome to another CMB Minecraft tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be uh, doing a little bit more on the clock and hopefully this should fit into three parts. I was going to do it as a, as a two-parter but I felt like a 30-40 minute tutorial was not too long, too long. So um, yeah, I've, I've finished it. It's counting in-game time and uh, it's extremely accurate for my tests. So today I'm going to take you through putting the arrays together and then chaining them with this little purple circuit here. I'm going to show you how to build these 12 line arrays because in the last tutorial we did these 10 lines and what you actually need is two 12 line arrays in the middle so you've got 12 different bits of information um, in the array and then yeah I probably might talk a little bit about timing but I'll do the displays in part three so uh, yeah stay tuned. Hawkeye so the reason we need the uh, 12 line dis um, arrays is because you've got 0 to 5 here obviously counting up your uh, tens of minutes this display and that's going from 0 to 5 so that's 6 and then you're just going to do that looped twice so it'll always display 0 to 5 then 0 to 5 again and go round in a loop and then obviously we need a 12 line here because this is displaying our hours which out here is obviously from 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock which is 12 hours so yeah you've got to have those two in the middle and then we've got these two 10 arrays at the end and at the beginning which we've already covered so I shall show you how to make them here we go then you're going to start with eight pistons out like that and then you're going to put your memory in so it's a slightly different setup to our 10 line. So you're going to have, you're going to build four out and then three up. So one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, like that. Giving you six bits of information. And then again, you're just mirroring it like we did last time. So it look, should look something like that. And that gives you your 12 different lines. Then, yeah, it's pretty much the same gig from there. So uh, five, six, seven, eight blocks out with the uh, pink wall. And then you're just going to lay eight pistons on their side like that. And then you're going to want to build out one there and eight pistons along like this. Like that. And then you're going to want the ones that push down here. Two, three, four, five. So that's how your piston should look. And then, again, you've just got to link them up like we were doing before. So instead of having your wall here, you're actually going to move it one across like that and then build up. And then just across the top of the pistons. You can put redstone on there. All the way, Dan. Peter, and then Peter's in here as well. You're just going to link them all up. Oh, what we're talking about. That repeat goes there next to the pink wall. So you don't get any crosstalk. And then that goes there. Then you've got to do your blue side. So again, you're going to inset one. So instead of putting it there, you're going to put it there. And then you're just going to build up. A bit like that. And then again, redstone on top. And then you're just going to whack a load of repeaters there. One there and then like that redstone dust now in this setup I'm using I was previously having an input there which I still have got but we're actually linking the whole thing up so if you put an input in all of the pistons get pushed out apart from this jazz they all get pushed out and the reason we're doing that is because we're now using a pulse limiter instead of a clock so previously I had this set up here where it just kind of went round on its own like that. But in this, because this doesn't move every second or it doesn't move as often, you only need to use a pulse limiter just to get it to go round once in a while. So the way you do that is put two blocks there, uh, three ticks delay repeater, two torches like that, and then you just link it up to give you a pulse limiter. And then your input is here. And whack a little button on here like that. Now to get this to work all you have to do is just offset that so you're just going to put this on full delay and what that will do is 
the pink circuit will go, and then the blue circuit, as you can see. A bit like that. So now if you put your memory in, just put one in, for example. Like that. And then watch her cycle round. It should be absolutely fine. There we go. So we're using a pulse image there, and that just simplifies everything for us, makes the build slightly smaller to get the everything but the first. No, in fact, all of them use pulse limits. So, cool. Now, yeah, this is all pretty self-explanatory, this bit. You're just going to fill it in like we did last time without the roof on. All the way up to the edge there, and then fill it in like that. Then we've got our glass carry out line at the end, if you remember from last one. Glass like that. Now, you've then got to put your power circuit in in the middle, which looks a little bit like this. So you're just going to have, uh, yeah, black wall all the way up to the glass, too wide, and then just repeaters like that torch at the end and then redstone dust connecting them all up now this side because we're going out the back you've got it like that torch and a repeater and that's how you read from the back and then you can actually fill that in with green wool and then this is your output here at the front so again too wide and then you come in here and I like to do this pattern so I do repeater gap repeater gap all the way then I put redstone dust in the middle like that. And then you can just fill this up, uh, making sure that your corners are cut off in the pattern. So a bit like this. And then we've got our glass at the end. And that's it. So you've got this corner cut off here and that corner cut off there. You always have to have that pattern. So let's take her for a spin. There she goes. Like I said before, it's always or it's never a bad idea to fill in a different colour and just watch that go around to make sure you're not getting any corruption. Make sure it goes around in a nice block. So that looks like that's okay. And um, that's it pretty much done. The only thing I would add is... The way I do this for displays is wherever there's a bit of dust, I will build down one like that and then cut this out and then I'll put repeaters in like that. And all that does is it just allows you to connect the bottom three segments of a uh, seven seg display a lot easier because you can kind of run the circuit down to the ground really easily and then these can go up like that so you can separate your signals quite easily and also you probably want to put some redstone dust there like that. So that's your output board done basically um yeah so that that's the um 12 line now i'll show you how to chain them together hockey dokey um yeah so the first place i start really when i build these clocks is with the arrays here and there's a specific way that i position them so i'll start in the middle here with a with a gap and then i'm just gonna have one gap then the pink circuit and the blue circuit of either array so there's always one gap in between each one and then I line them up at the front so that they're all with their outputs parallel to each other like that uh, it just makes it you know fairly clean that way so that's how I set them up and then you've specifically got to have the 10 line um, memory array here then a 12 line another 12 line and then a 10 line at the end and that's the kind of setup for this clock because obviously like I said before, this is going to count your tens of minutes, so 0 to 5. So obviously that's a 6 or a 12 line you're going to need there. And then this is going to count your hours, which obviously this is a 12-hour clock. So you're going to need 12 bits of information. And then this is going to count your zeros and ones at the end, so your tens of hours, which just is a loop of 0 and 1. So you need 10 in there. Now, um, to link them together is extremely easy. Because obviously every time this goes past 10, you're going to need to carry out to the next one. And every time this goes past 5, you're going to need to carry out to the next one, etc, etc. So you use these little purple circuits at the back here. 
So you want to put a block in the glass line there. Come in here, repeat a facing out to the back. And then you're just going to put a sticky piston there with a purple block like that. And that should carry out. And then all you've got to do is feed this carry out into this red circuit. So take that button off. And the way I do it in this example, nice and easy. So you've just got a block there with a torch on top. Block up like that. Then a block out there just to bring the signal down. And then you're going to run it into the uh, red pulse limiter of the next array. And that means every time a block that you input here when you're writing your numbers in goes like that. You see it cycles the next array on. And every time that passes, it will just cycle the next one along. So super simple. And then all you've got to do is um, copy that down the line. So again, just a torch. And then... You're taking a signal from when this block is above that torch with redstone dust there. And then you're just going to bring it down to the next array. Give it a little test. There she goes. That looks fine. And then finally, you're just going to do it on this one. Obviously, the last array doesn't have a carry out because, yeah, it doesn't affect anything. So, in fact, we can bring it down there. And again, give her a little test bit like that so probably the last thing once you've got that set up the last thing for this tutorial is just to talk about how you get the timings and then in the next one I'll show you how to make the displays and write the number information onto these arrays so this is going to be a pretty short um, tutorial just about chaining so I'll show you the timings so to get in game time uh, the way you've got to do it is you've got to count up in threes and you're going to do that every two and a half seconds uh, in the minutes here. And then obviously you're going to carry over every time these go past zero. So we'll come up to nine now and then when it ticks over to two, this will change as well because it's gone past uh, a ten. And this is just counting those. So this is how you fit 12 hours into 20 minutes basically. It's actually into 10 minutes and all I'm using is this AM PM display here to tell you whether or not it's halfway through the cycle. Now, the way you do that is using a two and a half second clock here, and that's just a 25 tick clock that's just going around in a loop. And then I'm using this minecart here to restart the uh, repeaters, a bit like this. So, for those guys that don't know, basically, if you've got a repeater powered and you log out, uh, like this and then log back in as you can see they're now stuck but if you put a redstone signal next to them they'll restart but it has to be a redstone signal now all that cart is doing is just running past the repeaters over these detector rails giving them a redstone signal from the side and as you can see when I log back in the clock started again so it's not foolproof and I'd say probably 8 out of 10 times it'll work um, but sometimes it won't so you know it's better than nothing better than a poke in the eye that one um, it's just a bit of a token gesture really so for now I'll just show you how to put in the actual time so you're going to use 7 repeaters and then they're all going to be on full delay apart from the last one, which you just leave. And that obviously gives you 25. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 25 at the end. And then you just want to loop them together and start. Just put some power in briefly and it'll just start looping around. And then all you're going to do is hook that up to your uh, pulse limiter here. And as you can see, every two and a half seconds, you're going to get some uh, some movement there. But if you want to add the this whole control system here with the car and then I also have a lever here that turns the system on or off depending. So it's now off. And if you watch the clock is now back on. And then if we hit that, it's off. So if you want to do this circuit, um, you can come on the world save and check it out. I don't think it's really that important, I guess. I mean, yeah, you, you guys can kind of figure that out I'm sure so that this is what you should be left with really is this 25 clock here and then all of your arrays chained together 
and then the next one I'll show you how to put them straight into the displays and uh, then we'll, we're done basically. So um, yeah, thanks for watching and part three will probably be out exactly the same time as this so you shouldn't have to wait.